Today we are looking at an awesome science phenomenon called... The Marangoni Effect. Really cool, let's go. The Marangoni Effect is so cool and it makes water look like it's a living thing. It's not, but that's just the way it be. But first, before we get into this video, if you love science, make sure you subscribe. We have new content coming out every single week. Let's get into the Marangoni effect. This week we are looking at Marangoni flow and hopefully getting a quite a few cool shots of exactly what this is. Next week, We'll be looking into droplet decomposition. Before we go into our studio to show you some of these effects, let's define some terms. The Marangoni effect is the transfer of mass along an interface between two fluids, fluids, <laughs> fluids due to a difference of surface tension. Essentially what that means in layman's term is if you have two different fluids, each with a different surface tension, say water, which has a fairly high surface tension versus isopropyl alcohol, which has a low surface tension, there will be a flow from the low surface tension to the high surface tension. We're going to show you the most basic form of Marangoni flow. And it's easy enough that you can do yourself at home. All you need is water, dish soap, and Pepper, we're gonna use dill. All right, so let's just get right into this. So we do have some water. I'm gonna fill up a dish. I'm going to use a Petri dish because we are science and science is we. It doesn't have to be full. Do you wanna pour in some of the dill? So when we put the dill on top, it will float on the surface of the water because of surface tension. Now, surface tension is essentially molecular attraction. Each molecule of water is attracting to each other by a certain amount and the surface tension of water is fairly high. So dill can float on the surface of it. All right, next step. We're gonna get some soap here. Soap does not have high surface tension. Almost, it, very low actually. So if we were to touch this to the surface of the water, the soap will spread out along the, along the surface of the water and the molecules in soap, they do attract each other, but not as much as water. So when we touch the center, let's just try this. It, the soap appears to push the dill away from the center. But that's not what's happening. What's actually happening is we're decreasing the surface tension of the center with soap, but the outer ring still is pulling with the same amount of force with that molecular uh, attraction of the water. So really the dill is just suddenly being pulled away from the center by the water molecules, not being pushed by the soap. I am super excited about this next one because we are mixing the Marangoli effect with a couple of other phenomena, like um, we're going to show you what happens when we break down the bonds in milk. Okay, so milk is made up mostly of water. And if we pour the milk in here, Da, da, da. The milk has a high surface tension. Let's drop in some food coloring. So we've dropped the food coloring down into this Petri dish and because of the surface tension of the water in the milk, they're pretty much staying where they're gonna stay. Now, this is where it gets cool. We're gonna just drop a single drop of soap into the center of the Petri dish. I'll show you what happens and we'll explain it after. So it pushes them away and then it starts mixing it. So it is important that if you want to try this at home, you use between one and 3% milk. Don't use really high fat content like coffee creamer or 0% milk because that fat content is the stuff that creates the cool mixing of the colors. Let's look at this again, except for this time I'll zoom in, we'll get a nice close up and some cool shots like that. And I will explain to you exactly what's going on. 
we have drops of food coloring here in the milk. And when we put in a drop of soap, there, do you see that? That was the Marangoni effect that pushed the food coloring away from the center. But now we get into some fascinating chemistry here. So water is a polar molecule and fat is a nonpolar, so they can't really mix. And the fat in milk is held in place by very weak chemical bonds. Soap, on the other hand, has properties of both polar and nonpolar molecules. So the nonpolar parts of the soap molecule are bonding with the fat that's within the milk. And the polar side of the soap molecule is bonding with the water. So we're literally allowing the fat in the milk to be bonded with the water in the milk itself due to the soap. And what's happening is the soap is just bending all over itself to bond with the fat that's in the milk and causing it to twist and roil and bend all over the place trying to bond with itself. And the molecules of food coloring is just along for the ride which allows us to see this beautiful explosion of colors. We have one more experiment to show you on the Marangoni effect. Yes, and for this if you want to follow along at home is you just need a piece of glass some isopropyl alcohol and some water. I couldn't find a piece of glass, so I took out a pane <laughs> from one of my windows. <laughs> I have a terrible habit of destroying things in my house for the sake of science. Science, ya! Yeah! <laughs> so what we do now, we have some distilled water and I'm just going to put a drop on this glass. And it doesn't have to be a big, whoop. <laughs> it can be a big drop. <laughs> All right, and we have isopropyl alcohol in a bowl with a dropper. And if we put a drop of isopropyl alcohol beside the drop of water, it will actually, the water will jump over itself to get away from the isopropyl alcohol. And I'll show you and then I'll explain exactly why. So if we drop it there. Look at that, eh? So as soon as it touches, the water is actually moving across the pane of glass, fleeing the isopropyl alcohol and jumping over itself to get away. That's so cool. Okay, so the reason why the water is running away from the isopropyl alcohol is because the water has a higher surface tension. And because when the isopropyl alcohol begins to mix with the water, it creates this layer that has a lower surface tension than the rest of that little bubble of water. And because there's higher attraction, molecular attraction behind that joint than before, all of the water will want to be pulled away from that mixture of the two liquids. It's still going, it's still running away. And eventually they will mix completely and then there there will be the same surface tension throughout the, the entire water droplet. That's so cool. What are some of the applications of the Marangoni effect? Well, not very many, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's something that you always have to keep in the back of your mind if you're an advanced engineer using some... I don't know what type of engineer would use the Marangoni effect, but it does mess certain things up. It is used minorly in cloud seeding, so if you want some rain, you can seed some clouds using the Marangoni effect somehow. I don't know, because I haven't studied that that much. Anyways, thanks for watching. This is Destructive Creativity. If you like this, make sure you subscribe and leave us a like, because it really helps our channel out. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Eliana. <laughs> See you next time. Yeah. Bye. This week, we are looking at... What are we, what is this? Cut. Cut. <laughs> Miringa. Or Bernard. Bernard. <laughs> or Bernard Marangoni Convection.